Hi, I'm Jennifer Clare from Home Cooking New York. We do cooking classes in students' home kitchens. We come to you to teach you how to cook because it's much easier to learn how to cook on your own equipment in your own space. Anyhow, today I'm going to teach you how to make a perfect roast chicken, kind of the quality that you get in a restaurant where you have a super dark, crackly brown, crispy skin and really wonderful, moist, tender meat. Chicken with the skin still attached and with the bone still in is really the best way to get the moist meat with a super crackly skin. The first thing you want to know when you're uh, roasting chicken pieces in a pan is three things. You want to have very, very dry meat if you're the kind of person who rinses your chicken when it comes out of the package, which is fine. Just make sure you blot it very well with paper towels so it's dry. If it's wet and it goes into a hot pan, not only will it splatter the grease at you, but it will start to steam instead of brown the minute it hits the hot oil. Uh, second thing is you want to season it very well, and that means a good deal of salt. I like to use kosher salt because as you can see, you can see the granules of salt still on the chicken. Sometimes when you use table salt and you are seasoning something, it dissolves right into your vegetables or your meat instantly, so you don't really know how much salt you've put on it. Um, and then a little bit of pepper if you want. The pepper is more just for flavor, but the salt is actually there to dehydrate the skin so it starts to brown right away. So it's there actually for not only a taste reason, but also for a chemical reason. Third thing you want to do is you want to heat up your pan till it's super hot. Super hot meaning I want to almost see wisps of smoke coming up off the surface of this pan coming from the oil. The reason you do that is because you're going to be putting cold chicken into a hot pan. So you want to have an over hot pan so once you put the cold chicken into it to start cooking, it will drop to the right temperature. If you start with a medium heat, it will drop too low and it won't start browning right away. All right, our oil is nice and hot. You can see on the camera there is a little wisps of smoke coming up off the surface. So you're going to put your chicken in cut side down and you want to place it very strategically because once you put the chicken in the pan, you can't move it. You got to leave it there for a minimum of about eight minutes. If you move the chicken around, you're gonna tear the skin and you're gonna inhibit it from having that nice golden brown crust. Let it cook. That is the biggest thing that, biggest mistake that students make uh, when they're cooking chicken and they wanna get that brown crust is flipping it too early and moving it around. So letting it sit here, set a timer for eight minutes and walk away from it. You don't have to check it for at least eight minutes. Okay, it's been eight minutes. I have a little splatter screen on here if you have small children or dogs, it's a good idea. Keeps the uh, oil inside of your pan, plus because it's pretty hot. So we're gonna turn them over, see that nice golden brown color, and they come up right off the bottom of the pan. This is not a non-stick pan. Okay. So you're gonna turn them over, you're gonna turn off the heat, and you're gonna continue cooking this in the oven in the same skillet. The direct heat of the stove is what's gonna give you that gorgeous golden brown color on your skin but it is not enough to cook all the way through. Especially when you have bone in a chicken, it doesn't cook through evenly. So you need to now stick this in the oven so you have a nice moist meat that isn't dried out. So for thighs, which are these, chicken thighs usually take about 15 minutes. If you had nice thick breasts, they'd probably need to be there for about 25 minutes. Okay. And now we need to take the chicken's temperature. So you take the largest piece of chicken that you have in here, because if the largest piece is done, then they're all done. And you're going to hold it sideways because it's, it's just too shallow to, to stick this in. If you have a big roast, that works. But you have to cook it inside. And you just make sure it says 165, which it does. So into our hot skillet that we just took out of the oven and removed the chicken, we're going to cook some onions. This is all just for a little bit of flavor for our gravy. Cook them for about three minutes they browned a bit and you can scrape up the bottom of the pan so all those browned on bits come up. Our onions are nice and brown and softened. So we're going to sprinkle our flour in here. You basically have to approximate depending on how much fat is in the pan you have to do equal amount of flour. So I'm going to guess there's about two tablespoons of fat in the pan. So I'm going to put about two tablespoons of flour in here. And again this is your roux. Equal parts fat and flour that you cook to a nice little paste. And then when you add liquid to this and it comes to a boil, it thickens that liquid. So we're going to add our liquid. We have wine, chicken broth, and some fresh herbs. This is called deglazing. You pour liquid into a hot pan and it's going to bubble up all the browned on bits that are still on the bottom of the pan. It's going to boil it up into the sauce. Give it about three minutes to reduce, not only to thicken, but also to concentrate the flavors. And that is called a pan gravy. So our gravy is nice and thickened here. So we're just going to spoon it over our chicken. Take a little bit. Just leave behind the herbs. 
This, of course, is perfect with mashed potatoes, too. Great gravy for that as well. All right, and there you go. Roasted chicken with pan gravy. Can't beat that.